Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce the gradient vector and do an example with it. So if we are given a function f of x, y, so it has these independent input variables x and y, then we say that the gradient vector of f is a specific vector that contains the partial derivatives of our function. So we use this triangle, this upside down looking triangle, then f of x, y, and we say this is equal to the partial derivative of f in the first component, and then the partial derivative of y in the second component. Here, I'm still leaving x and y as my variables. We can also evaluate the gradient vector at specific points, so like at a point a and b, and then we would evaluate x equals a and y equals b for both of our partial derivatives. I'll show you that in the example later. So the upside down triangle that I talked about, this is called a nabla or a del symbol. I've heard both of these used to describe it. And in multivariable calculus, we often use this nabla symbol anytime we are representing that we have partial derivatives being involved in what we are doing. So here, because the partial derivatives are going in the x and y component respectively, we use this nabla symbol just to represent that there's partial derivatives going on. You see this symbol again in other instances where we have partial derivatives. Additionally, if you're trying to read this out loud, I usually read it as the gradient of f, or maybe grad f, and sometimes somebody might say like del f. I usually just say the gradient of f or grad f if I'm saying it out loud. So here we've done this with just the input variables x and y. But if there are more input variables with your function, the gradient vector still works in the same way. So you can do this with as many input variables as you like, but even if we just had three, let's say g of x, y, and z, then we would write the gradient of g is equal to the partial derivative of x in the first component, the partial derivative of y in the second component, and then the partial derivative of z in the third component. Basically, you just match up the variables with the corresponding partial derivative. So whatever variable is in the first position, the corresponding partial derivative goes in the first component. Same for the second position and the second component, etc. So before we do an example, I just want to mention that the gradient vector is a way for us to represent the information that is provided by the partial derivatives. So on their own, the partial derivatives are just sort of equations, but the gradient vector is just a nice way to contain all of the information about the partial derivatives in a vector form. Okay, let's try an example where we find the gradient in general and a gradient at a specific point. So let's say that we are given a function x cubed plus 4xy, and we want to find both the gradient of f and the gradient at the point 2, negative 4. So we're going to do these sort of like two separate steps. I'm going to first find the gradient, and then we'll find the gradient at the specific point. So the gradient vector is the vector with the partial derivative with respect to x in the first position, and the partial derivative with respect to y in the second position. So I personally like to find my partial derivatives separately, and then substitute them in to this vector. So let's find the partial derivatives, and then we'll plug them in the right spots. Okay, so first we have the partial derivative with respect to x. So my first term is x cubed, so that becomes 3x squared. Then my second term is 4xy. I'm considering both the 4 and the y to be constants, and so I just have x to the 1 power, which goes away, becomes 1 in my derivative, and that leaves me with just the constants 4y. Then for the partial derivative with respect to y, my x cubed is a constant, and so that derivative is 0. Then I have 4x as my constant in 4xy, and so I'm just left with that constant, 4x. Now I can assemble these into my gradient vector, and so my vector looks like 3x squared plus 4y in the first component, and then 4x in the second component. Just a small interpretive comment for the gradient of f. Just remember that the partial derivative of x is the change in the positive x direction, and so we can think that that first component represents that rate of change in the positive x direction. 
Similarly, the y component represents the rate of change in the positive y direction, and so that is my 4x. Okay, so we found the gradient vector for f. Now we just want to find the specific value for the gradient at the point 2, negative 4. So I'm just going to take my gradient and plug in 2, negative 4, and I'll go ahead and do that math. So I'm doing 3 times 2 squared plus 4 times negative 4 in my first position, and then 4 times 2 in my second position. Remember, I'm just putting in 2 for x and negative 4 for y. Simplifying, I'm getting 12 minus 16 in the x component and 8 in the y component. So my final vector is negative 4, 8. This represents the rate of change in the x direction and the rate of change in the y direction at the point 2, negative 4. All right, that is it for this video. Just a short introduction to what the gradient vector is and how we find it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.